Okay. And I'm just going to pin this. All right, let's get started. Hi guys, welcome to July. Um, we just have a few announcements at the beginning of this call and then Monica is gonna talk about social media and some strategies for your social media with your Zaya business. So let's start with some announcements. Um, let's see, first of all, we've got a new rep training this Thursday. So that's a really great thing to follow up with people about if they've been on the fence about this business, just messaging them and say, hey, just so you know, we've got a new rep training coming this Thursday and you could get, you know, go ahead and enroll. You'll have your kit in a few days. You can go through the training and then get your business up and running right away. It's just a really good um, thing to touch base with your prospects about. So that's at 7.30 p.m. Um, we're going to try something a little different in August. Instead of a new new rep training each month, we're going to try like a, a new rep Q&A, almost like a coffee chat kind of feel, but we're going to send out, we still do this. We do this now. We send out the new rep training every week to all new reps. So it's kind of like they already have that. So we're thinking that maybe they can watch that and then come to the to the chat to the new rep q a like with specific questions we'll see how it goes we're just open to trying new things um pillar awards will be announced tomorrow so be on the lookout for that that's another thing that we are probably going to put a pin in for a little bit because we've had really low participation lately and that's you know expected we've been doing it for about a year and a half now um and it's been so great but I think, you know, when the newness wears off, people kind of forget about it. So we're going to take a break and then probably reintroduce, re reintroduce it this fall, maybe with a twist, maybe something a little bit different. Those of you going to Mexico, we are so excited to see you um, be watching the mail in the next few weeks um, and also be watching. I'll put it in the team page probably tomorrow. Um, we're going to have a group just for the people who are going to Mexico so we can coordinate things and share photos and that kind of thing. It's just easy to all communicate. So if you're going to Mexico, just be on the lookout for that group. Make sure that if you rank advanced to director or above last month, or you are a double Zaya executive for the second month in a row, um, that you fill out the form that was in the newsletter today for your sandals. We want to get those mailed to you. So you're going to um, email on fire at gmail.com and then we'll get you we'll get coordinated with you as far as what sandals we can send you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, send me a message and I can I can point you in the direction of that. Um, okay, you guys, we were invited, Monica and I were invited to participate in something a little different for our Discover Zaya call this month and bring our team and that's you guys um so we're going to try this uh monica's upline her name is lindsay holsey and she did this last month with her team it's basically like a week-long sneak peek of what we do as reps where there are videos there's a q a section it's like our discover zaya events but i think it's just called something different and it probably looks a little different because we're not the ones running it so we are going to try that this month. Um, we'll probably go back to what we usually do, but um, you know it's summertime, so we thought we could try this this month. Um, it will start the week of the the nineteenth, and I don't have a link for you yet. Um, but the the way last month discovers I a posting schedule worked, we want you to use the same idea to get ready for this group. So we'll have some more information for you in next week's newsletter as far as what you should post seven days before, six days before, da, 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 da. And then everybody adds their people kind of at once. It helps with the affinity of the group when, that when they're not being added a little bit at a time, but when they're being added, like when you're adding yours and I'm adding mine and you're adding yours, we all kind of do it on the same few days. So just know that that's coming and um, keep a list of people that you want to invite to that group. Okay. Um, I think one more thing, Summit. So I cannot believe that it's close enough to even talk about again. It's like, whoa, where's the summer going? But we had some questions about Summit, like what the Zaya activities are and all of that. 
And, and honestly, I don't have a lot of information for you, but I'm going to tell you what I do know. Um, if you are Zaya exec and above, you are going to be invited to the gala. That's a really special dinner just for Zaya execs and above. So you have to hit that rank this month. Um, and that's on Thursday night. Then on Friday, I'm sure you got the email about the um, warehouse tours. So they have those throughout the day that you can sign up for. If you can't make a warehouse tour, but you wanna see the warehouse, just don't panic and email customer service and they'll get you situated. I'm sure they will get you in so that you can see the warehouse at some point when you're there. Um, it, it is cool to see, but it's also not like a make or break thing. Like it would be cool, but if you, if you couldn't see it, don't be too sad. Um, the videos are kind of the same as seeing it in person, but that's on Friday. I think they're gonna have some sort of a workout Friday afternoon they have in the past. Sometimes they've done like a little get together on Friday night. We don't know that yet, but that, that's all I know about Zaya. But what I know about our team is we have Summit all day Saturday and then at the hotel, directly where the conference is, directly following the conference, we're gonna move over to another room and we're hosting a party for all of you. Um, so, and your guests, if you're bringing a spouse or something, they're welcome to join too. We'll have um, heavy appetizers and um, drinks and it'll be really fun. So that's on Saturday night. So that's really the only details we have about Friday. Um, so for planning purposes, you know, just do your very best and try to be, you know, flexible because Zaya might not even announce that till a few days beforehand because that's kind of how they roll. But our party is Saturday night and I think it starts at six and we'll probably be done at the conference at like 5.30. So any questions about any of that? That was a lot of information. Okay, all right, Monica is your turn. All right, I'm gonna Try to share my screen so you might have to give me permission. Yes, you do have to. Okay, now it looks like I can. All right, guys. Well, hello, and it's great to see all your faces. We hope you had a great fourth. So I um, did something similar to this at our Leaders and Achievers um, retreat. And then I've been asked um, a couple times to um, do a little um, training on it for different leaders. So I thought we would share it tonight with all of you. So let me share my screen. All right, Katie, can you see it? Okay. All right. So we are gonna be talking about organic marketing. Let me see here. So organic marketing is attracting people to you through your content and copy. So your content is just the daily stuff that you put out on your social, social media and copy is when you're um, asking, like doing a call to action post. You're talking about the business, you're talking about hosting a party. Um, that is, that's what copy is. So that's the difference between those two. So in this PowerPoint, we're gonna talk about your brand, your positioning, your avatar, your pillars, um, planning and posting schedule, and then how to engage on social media. Okay, so your brand is not Zaya. Yes, Zaya is part of your brand and who you are, but that is not what is gonna attract people to you. You are selling you. So your brand um, is, is who you are to your audience. So are you an encourager? Are you a mentor? Are you a coach? Are you a motivator? So when you're writing your content, think of how you want to come across to your audience. Um, how, and when you're writing your content, you should write it how you talk. So if you are sarcastic, um, bring that flair to your, to your content. If you um, have a dry sense of humor, if you're really upbeat, um, try to, just how you talk, try to write your content in that same way. And then it will help people um, get to know you better. Um, what is your message that you're trying to get across to your audience? So for example, my message is a simple girl who has been able to build a life by design. So that's kind of when I'm talking, I try to keep that, that feeling across my content when I write it. Um, so your brand is what you have to offer people. Um, how can you solve someone's problems? 
how can you serve them and how can you bring value to their life? So when you're writing your content, think of that as you're writing. Um, you know, you're, you're posting with purpose. Keep that in mind. You're not just posting to post. Um, you're posting, you know, for, you know, to help someone out to solve their problems, to add value to their life. Um, but good branding also creates leverage and a safety net um, for your future. So if down the road um, you want to do a podcast or you want to write a book or you want to launch a course, if you have good branding, people are already going to know what you have to offer and who you are. And they'll be more likely to want to listen to that podcast like Katie or, you know, um, Katie's done an awesome job with her branding. And so people, people know her really, really well. All right. So positioning. Positioning is how your audience perceives you. So when you're writing your content, um, keep that in mind. You want your, your positioning is going to match you to your best people. Uh, a businesswoman making like $500 a month is going to position herself differently than a businesswoman that is making $50,000 a month. Um, and you're, it's always going to be changing as, as your business grows, as you grow. Your, your, your positioning is going to change. But when you're writing your content, um, try to speak to your people and your audience. So great positioning will speak directly to your best or worst people. They either say I'm with her or they will move on. Either way, you want your people to make a decision about you. So we're going to talk a little bit about your people or your avatar. Um, your avatar is who you are speaking to. Um, we're not trying to serve everyone um, because serving everyone serves no one. So this was really hard for me because I was always, when I was writing my posts, trying to figure out, well, I want to speak to her, but I want to speak to her. Um, but really, I just need to figure out my, my avatar um, and just and think of her every time that I, I make a post. I'm not trying to talk to somebody who is 20. I'm not trying to talk to somebody who is 60. I am trying to talk to somebody who's in their 40s. Um, originally, I was thinking, oh, I would go 35 to 55. But um, the more I've worked on this, I think like 40s right now are my, are my people that I'm talking to. Um, so get to know your avatar really well. So your avatar is this, the person that you want to work with. Um, like I said, the age range, is she married? Does she have kids? Is she an empty nester? Is she a new mom? So for me, I'm, I'm speaking um, mostly to empty nesters or people that have, you know, high school age children. Um, where does she shop? Um, does she work? Does she work full-time or part-time? Is she a stay-at-home mom? Really narrow it down. Take some time to figure out who, who you want on your team, who your person is that you want to work with. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about pillars. Um, pillars or your niche, um, kind of, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, it's three to five things that you are you're going to consistently share about on your social media. So you're going to, and this was kind of what we really dove into um, at the Leaders and Achievers um, retreat with, you know, trying to figure out what people's pillars were. So I'd ask them, like, what are your hobbies? Um, what do you like to talk about? What is something that you can talk about for hours and hours? Um, and, and not feel like you're, you're grasping, um, you know, to, to figure out content. Um, that is a great place to start. Um, what are you good at? So what can you help people? Are you good at cooking? Are you good at baking? Are you great at CrossFit? Um, think of things that you're good at that you could share tips or hacks or recipes. Um, Anything that you can that you can put out that's going to add value um, to people's lives that is going to help them or serve them. So, like I mentioned, um, you know, tips, healthy recipes, book recommendations. Um, I like to do um, quotes for inspiration. Um, you can do mom hacks. Anything that is going to help your audience out. Um, the more that you are serving and helping. 
um, the more that people will get to know you and, and like you. And then, you know, when they're ready to buy a pair of leggings or if they've watched you um, build your business, when they are thinking, hmm, maybe I can do this, they will come to you because they already know know and like you. So um, so as far as your, your IG goes, you're gonna wanna stay consistent with those three to five things. So for me, I'm talking about being an empty nester, health and fitness, outfit inspo, clean simple recipes, and then the business. Um, when it comes to the business, I'm pretty much only sprinkling it in like one post a week um, with a call to action on that. Otherwise, I'm trying to offer value to my audience. All right. Um, I think there was something else I was just gonna say about that. Now I can't remember. Um, oh, so as far as posting, you're gonna stick to your pillars, but on your stories, that is a behind the scenes. That is your daily life. That is just how people really get to connect with you. Um, by, by staying with the three to five things on social media, that is when somebody's like, oh, um, I want a, I want an easy cookie recipe, clean, simple cookie recipe. Oh, I think Monica shares about that. So I'm gonna go back to her IG and look and find the recipe. So it's just something that people will go back to you when they're thinking of those things like, oh, I want a, you know, a 15 minute workout. Let me go see what she posted last week or something like that. So that is, that is why we wanna stay consistent with our pillars on social media. But as far as your stories go, you can, that is a behind the scenes, that is just, you know, whatever you wanna share, just so people get to know you a little bit better. All right. So planning and posting, um, as far as social media goes, you guys, we have to be consistent. Um, I, I don't like it either, <laughs> but we have to be consistent in order for this organic marketing to work. Um, we can't just post one week and then not post for another couple of weeks. Um, so what I found that's been really helpful for me is planning out my, my content um, the Sunday before. I kind of just write it down on a calendar that I have and like Mondays is going to be a recipe, you know, Tuesdays is going to be um, uh, inspirational quote, um, you know, Wednesday is going to be, um, you know, maybe a fitness picture of some sort with a caption. Um, Thursday is going to be a reel. I, I know Katie's doing the reel a day, which I was, I was like, oh, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> but I'm like already like, oh, no, I can't do a reel a day. Um, but I am going to post one tonight. So, you know, uh, it's funny. Can I just say this sure. dumb reel I made of my old dog today is the biggest reel I've ever done. It's it is the so dumbest funny. thing. It's hilarious that Wrigley is like, the it's dog, so dumb. The dog that never gets any exposure <laughs> is like having the last laugh. <laughs> I think maybe now he can cross over that he's had some limelight. Maybe this, maybe this is what he needs, Katie. <laughs> Um, so as far as posting, aim for the four times a week. Um, that is, that's a good goal, um, to shoot for. That is, that's what I shoot for. <laughs> um, so four times a week. And obviously if you can do reels, um, do reels because right now that is what is going to grow your Instagram. Um, they are huge and I don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. Um, I started doing Shalene and Brock's, um, IG training and um, that's, he's like all about the reels, do the reels. So, um, and then also, um, like I mentioned, doing a call to action post once a week about the business op. Um, and um, like Katie talked about, we are gonna do another discover with those templates. Um, I'm hoping I'm gonna, we'll come up with a little bit different, different templates. So we're not using the same exact templates that we used the last time. But a problem or an issue I want to just briefly talk about, um, I guess I'll, I'll do that in a second, but um, let me just talk about hashtags real quick. Um, originally, they were saying that you should put 30 hashtags on each of your posts or your reels. Now they backed it down to eight to 15 as of now, um, which is great because I felt like 30 hashtags was like impossible to come up with. Um, but keep that in mind. And make sure you're putting them in the first comment and not actually in your post. And those hashtags should apply to your niche or your pillars, whatever the post is about. So if you're doing 
a recipe. It should be all about whatever it is, clean eating, simple clean eating, healthy eating, all of that. But then if you're doing a fitness one, it should be hashtags about fitness. So the hashtags should apply to your post. You should not be using the same hashtags for every single um, pillar that you're using. Okay, and then I'm gonna just talk about how to engage with others. So Keeney and I were talking about this with our Discover Zaya that we had last time. You guys did awesome with those templates. We absolutely loved seeing all of your posts. It was great. I think this time around, maybe we'll do some kind of, again, a hashtag forum and we can, I don't know, do some kind of giveaway or something for people that use the hashtag. But um, you also need to do the reach outs, do the follow-ups. Um, posting alone is not going to um, bring people to you. You have to still do those, 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 um, that engagement and on other people's posts. You have to follow up with, you know, people that you've talked to before. Posting alone isn't, isn't going to be enough. So um, just a little, a few examples on how you can engage with others, maybe new people that you're following on Instagram. I love to follow like for me, 40, the hashtag 40 something um, or empty nester. I have been able to connect with a lot of people. Um, it's fun to like look at their, you know, click on their, um, their, their circle and watch their stories and, and comment on their stories and, and comment and on their post. And it's just been, I don't know, it just feels really good and really authentic. So um, that has really worked for me. But like or comment on their IG stories. So like I just said, leave a, a, a genuine comment, um, give feedback if they ask a question, whether it's on their stories or if it's in their post. Um, ask them about themselves. Maybe they, you know, I don't know what, if they said something in their post, you can be like, oh, so do you live in blah, 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 or, you know, something like that. Ask a question, ask, you know, about them. Um, reshare a story or post and share why you liked it. That's really easy if they post a quote or something like that to reshare that on your stories and you know add a nice comment on that. Or if you know if they're having a problem or if they're they mentioned or I don't know couldn't figure out what to have for dinner, you know, offer a simple recipe or something on their post. Just really engage and be social with them. And then the more that you're posting and liking their stuff, the more they will see your stuff. And it just kind of goes back and forth. And I mean, don't make it like, you're, don't just pick five people and just, you know, do it for a week. And I don't know, it would feel creepy, but you know, try to follow, you know, 20 or 30 people um, using, um, you know, somebody that's in your niche that you connect with, that you like um, what they have to say. Definitely look at their, um, their Instagram and kind of scroll down um, and see if there's somebody that you want to connect with. Um, and I also, when I was looking at like the um, hashtags for empty nester and 40 something, um, if there was something that I, you know, somebody that I really wanted to follow, um, I just sent them a direct message and said, oh, I love your feed. I'm following you because I'm also an empty nester and I love, you know, what you're saying about this or that or whatever. Um, but just make sure it's genuine and it doesn't come across spammy. So, all right. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? I'm going to stop my screen share. And Katie, do you have anything that you want to add? Oh, I wasn't, I couldn't see any of the chats going on. So, um, oh, post me three to five times a day. No, you don't need to post three to five times a day stories. But oh. remember when that was a thing? That was a thing. Now that you say that, I beg you. It was a big thing. Yeah. No, you don't have to. No, no, you don't have to do that. Just your stories. I think it's important to to put the stories out there, um, but not posting three to five times a day. Let's see. Anybody else? Yeah. What questions do you guys have? This is your chance. Ready? Oh, thank you. Jody, was that helpful? I know you had some questions about social. Jody Hunter, was that helpful? Yeah, that was really helpful. That was yeah. great. Oh, um, yeah, I think our team is trying to dive into it more and trying to figure out a place to start, I think is the hardest part. 
but that was great. Give a little more guidance as to what we could be sharing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was really, it's been really helpful for me because I'm very structured and I like organization and I like to have a plan. So knowing, you know, three to five things I'm just going to focus on and just come up with content for those. Um, and also writing it down early in the week and actually writing my content um, has been really helpful too. So then when the day comes, I can just copy and paste. I like to use um, keep, Google Keep and I'll just write the post in there and then I'll copy and paste it. And, um, you know, then I don't really have to think about it when, when Wednesday comes around, so. Yes, eight to 15 as of right now. <laughs> Hi. Hi. And I have a quick question. Hi. Oh, it is. So question. I'm brand new. I just started. Yeah. And um, so when you post like on Facebook, do you post just on your um, like personal page? Just like my name is Amber Tice. So I just post under like my personal Facebook page. Yes. Yeah, you'll get the best. Did it go list. through? Yes. <laughs> Jen Roman, I can't mute you, but you're, can, if you can hear me, are you able to mute? It won't let me mute you. Uh, oh, let me try. I can. There we go. Okay, there oh, we go. Um, <laughs> that's right. That's why I couldn't do it. Um, Amber, you, you froze a little bit, but I think you were asking if you post on your regular page. And that really is where you get the most bang for your buck on Facebook. So a business page, like there hardly anybody's going to see that. So use your personal page as much as you can to get people over to your VIP group, which I know you just started. But yeah, your personal page is really a hot spot for Facebook. She might have gotten kicked off. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't see her now. Darn it. Yeah. Um, I think really the key is like, no matter what strat, how you're using this strategy or where you at in your journey of social media, whether you're like really comfortable with it or just getting started or somewhere in the middle, it's about being intentional and knowing that it's a business tool. So if you're on this call, you want to grow your business. So you need to be hosting parties, talking to people behind the scenes and using social. It's like, you've got to do all of those. If you only use social, you're not going to you're not going to build the business you want. If you're not using social at all, you're not going to build the business you want. You really got to be doing all of those and being intentional is just really key. So if you want to grow your social, taking an hour on Sunday to plan your posts is a business activity for you. And it, you will get it back in your, because your business will grow. I, um, I, was listening to a training today and, you know, she just talked about the power of YouTube. You know, if you want to learn reels and you feel stuck, YouTube has everything you want to know. Take an hour, block off some time and learn that. If you are uncomfortable with Instagram, do the same thing. Um, you know, we have to be self-starters a little bit here. So you guys have all the information you have at your, at your fingertips. It's just about being intentional and, and making a plan and then doing it. And staying consistent. Yes. Which is hard. <laughs> I, I'll tell you guys, I, I, am, I, I do not feel like a social media expert in any way, but I've been doing it for a long time. So I'm really comfortable with it. My numbers on Instagram have been stuck for like two months and I show up really regularly and I'm doing the hashtags and the reels and all the things. And I'll go up a few and then down a few and then up a few. And then it's like, oh my gosh, but it, I keep thinking of myself as that little guy chipping, you know, in the diamond mine. And like, I'm almost there and something's going to happen, but I have to keep showing up so that it does. But it's frustrating, you know? And, and we also have to sort of like detach ourselves from caring about those numbers, really. Like that's one metric, but it's not the only thing that matters. So you know, paying attention to it and learning from it, but also not being a slave to it and remembering that we're just using this as a tool. It's not everything. It's only part of the whole thing I think is important too. Yes, definitely. All right, guys. 
Well, if there's no other questions, thank you guys again for taking time out of your night and hopping on with us. We hope that was helpful. And Katie will um, post this recording, I'm sure, tomorrow sometime. Katie, do I need to do anything to give it back to you or can I? Yeah, I think I think you do. Let's see. I think you have to make me the host again or maybe I can do it. Yeah, see if you can do it. All right, you guys. Let us know if you have any questions and thank you so much for being on. Hey guys. We'll talk to you soon. Um, I think you have to do it, Monica. Um, it won't let me reclaim it. Let's see more. Oh, yes, it will. Hold on. Sorry. I am the host. Good.